All right, we are live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris, and this is my channel. We love comics. Thank you for taking the time to listen to one of my videos, and hopefully you will gather some information that can help you with if you decide or already are selling at Comic-Con sales, maybe even your own comic book stores, or even just selling in general. Uh, because um, I was a salesperson for almost two decades. I have a lot of sales experience. I also have a lot of business experience. I own my own businesses. And even though I'm not on the Fortune 500, I could still offer some tips and ideas that could help you, especially at Comic-Cons, but even in sales in general. So this may be a long video. I'm not sure how it will work out, but I wrote a whole list of things. But if you watch this whole video, even if you only get one good thing out of it, if it helps improve your ability to make money, give better customer service, and improve your overall comic experience, with especially with sales, then um, it, I would view it as successful. Because any new thing that you can learn is just going to improve your ability to do what you possibly love. So... Let me put on the video camera so I can make this a little more personal. And I already see people starting to come in. So welcome. Thank you so much for listening to this. And as you can see, I got a whole list of things that I want to talk about. So it may take a little while. So what inspired me to do this? Well, as usual, you guys know I watch a lot of comic book videos. I watch also a lot of things about business and things like that. And um, I've been to Comic-Cons, even though it's been a little while. I go to comic book stores and everything. Uh, like I said, I'm very good at sales if I ever have to. But um, the video that ultimately inspired me was a video that was made um, by Comic -com, Comic Tom 101. And I'm about to put the link in the live show right now. The link of the video. Now... Um, I've seen many people talk about the things that he talked about in the video, so I thought after I saw that, it really inspired me to maybe give some suggestions and tips that can help a person's overall experience and things they may not think about. Because one of the things I'm very good at is problem solving. When I hear somebody say, well, this problem is happening, I'm pretty good at coming up with something that can actually help that problem. So we're going to start out by talking about a couple of things they talked about, and then I'm going to go into further detail of things that you can do that can help your overall sales experience when it comes to comic books, or basically anything. But since this is a comic book channel, we're just going to focus on that. So, again, um, this is Comic Tom's video, the link that I just put in the, um, in the live chat. Um, let's start with that first. Because, like I said, I've seen many people talk about these same problems, and even in comic book stores. So this is just not isolated to one video. A lot of people may agree with this stuff, especially if you sell comic books for a living in Comic-Cons or in a, in a store. Now, one of the biggest things that they talked about, and I can totally understand this as an issue of somebody selling comic books, is people going over and touching the wall comics. Now, what are wall comics? The wall comics are the more expensive books, the ones you don't want to put in the boxes right in front of you. Those tend to be like your Amazing Fantasy 15s, or even something is, mi not minor, but something like Captain America 100. Something that's going to have some value. I would say probably I've seen things on the wall ranging from $50 up to the thousands. Now, of course, if you have a $1,000 book, that you want to sell, you obviously want to keep it in the most pristine condition, whether it's graded or not, because even a graded book, if somebody drops it and the case cracks or it lands on a corner and it dents the book, that lowers the grade, you're going to lose money. So the one thing I will tell anybody that sells anything where the people can actually physically touch it. Now, obviously, you don't have to worry about that on something like Amazon or eBay. This is the thing you want to keep in mind. Nobody will treat your things as precious as you will. So with that being said, the first thing you want to do is, especially when it comes to the books that you put on the wall. Now, don't always assume that a person that's looking at your products, whether they're going to buy it, whether they're bra you know browsing, or whether they're bragging to everybody, oh, look, I have that Amazing Fantasy 15, and they go over to it and show their friends. 
um, don't assume that they're going to take the same care with those books as you will. Now, I can understand why people put things on the back shelf. Because, especially comic books that are expensive, you don't want people stealing them. You don't want people damaging them. You don't want some, you know, person holding a baby or having grease all over their hands. You know, damage your collectibles, which is understandable. But let me ask anybody, because I used to go to comic cons. I see comic book stores and everything. I've failed to ever see this, and this is a great tip for anybody. Post a sign right where the comics are on the wall that says, please do not handle, if interested in comic, please ask for a representative. Things like that. Or even something simple, please do not touch the comics. Now, you always want to be nice. You don't want to have a sign that says, you know, don't touch or you'll be fined or you'll pay for it, break it, you buy it. Don't leave rude comments. That's not going to be productive. Because remember, the customer is always right and you want to treat them with the respect because you want their business. And treating them unfairly, unkind, or rudely is not going to do that. But you also have to have the middle ground of you don't want people just randomly coming over and damaging your items accidentally or on purpose. So the first thing I would say is put a sign up that says, please do not touch, please do not handle. If interested in any book, con please ask a representative. Another thing that you can do, block off an area. If you have like a $10,000 comic, Let's say you have a $100,000 comic. Let's say you have Action Comics number 1, 9.0, which is worth a couple of million dollars. The last thing you want is for somebody to, at the very least, damage it, and at the worst, steal it. So make a blockade so people do not have access to physically touch them. But if they're interested, they can point to it and say, hey, you see that book right there? I'm interested in it. Now... If you know anything about comics, they're very fragile. And the one thing about comic books is you can have a perfect comic in every way. Let's say it's worth $1,000. You bend one little eighth of an inch of a corner, that $1,000 book is now a six, dollars $700 book. So comics are very delicate. So when it comes to comic books, again, people are not going to treat your love of your items. Because most people, whether they sell them or not, they still have a love for what they're doing. The less you can have your customers touching your product, especially the more expensive ones, the less likely they're going to get damaged. So, for example, if somebody sees a book that's not graded, let's say it's an amazing Spider-Man number uh, seven, which is the second appearance of Vulture. If they say, oh, I'd love to look at it, don't hand it to them and let them take it out because they may not be careful. They may not know about, well, tape can get stuck to the back of the book and there goes the value of your book and for the cat lovers here's one of them right here you take the book out you show them the book you flip through the pages because you will be more careful with it and if there's a mistake that happens at least you have the responsibility of something that happened because there's nothing worse than a person who maybe is interested in a comic whether they're going to buy it or not whether they have money or not is irrelevant but they look at the book and accidentally rip it or accidentally drop it. That's a horrible feeling. And now you are put in the position, okay, do I let it go and take the loss? Do I make the person pay for it? Do I call, you know, the security? It leads yourself to a very awkward position. So don't be afraid to say when it comes to the valuable comics that you are the one that's going to handle them. Take responsibility so it limits your damage. So key things, have a sign. Block the ability for other people to touch those books. Now, don't keep them out of visibility, but make it so if they're interested in it, somebody has to come and help them. Think like a jewelry store. A jewelry store is not going to have all their expensive jewelry out for people to just touch and wear. You have to look through the glass cabinet and say, see that ring or that necklace or that watch right there? I'd like to look at it. And what does the person do? The person behind the counter takes it out and displays it in front of them. They don't normally just hand it to them. So you want to try and be very careful about that. Think like everybody out there is either going to ruin your comic or try and steal your comic. I know that's a, 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 not the best way you want to think, but I always think of it like driving. When I drive, I drive like everybody around me doesn't know how to drive. 
So I'm more diligent about looking around my surroundings so in case somebody is texting while they're driving, drinking while they're driving, or doing something they shouldn't be doing, I'm aware of my surroundings to prevent damage. So it's a lot of it is about prevention. And you're ultimately responsible for your products because if somebody handles a $10,000 book and they drop it and they don't have the money to pay for it, what are you going to do? You're the one that ultimately gets the negative part of the of the situation. So think of it as being careful. So if you want people to not touch the very expensive books, don't give them access. Don't be afraid to leave those signs. Okay, so another one that they talked about, and these are good points. Food on the tables. Now this could be in any place. I can understand exactly how any comic book dealer, whether it's a comic con or a comic store, would absolutely hate somebody taking their food or their beverage placing it on a box of comics while they browse through another because again when you know about comics somebody spills a soda all over the boxes there goes a bunch of comic books it's just improper etiquette so again another thing in front you have comic boxes at these comic cons you see it all the time the front of the boxes are white they're blank put signs say please do not place anything on top of the comics make sure you are diligent with that now here's the big thing i understand that people have limited space but here's a big thing instead of cramming in a bunch of comics and i'm going to get into the details of this of what comics i would sell if it were me instead of cramming a whole bunch of boxes and cramming as much comics as you can into these boxes Put a comic box and leave a little space so a person can put their pocketbook or put their food. Excuse me. Or better yet, you can get little folding tables and put them in between a couple of different boxes on right in front of the booths. So this way, people have a place to put down their belongings. Maybe purchase a 9 to $19 coat rack. So if people have pocketbooks, or maybe, like, they were also suggesting people have their backpacks, have them place them temporarily on the coat rack. There are ways that you can avoid these problems. So I can totally understand it. I'm not saying it's not a bad thing. You don't want to be yelling at them. You don't want to just sit there and let them do it. You have to let pe You have to assume that most people just don't care, because unfortunately most don't. You're not going to put food on your comic books. But somebody that doesn't know you, doesn't owe you anything, doesn't own any of those books, they don't care, even if it's on a subconscious level. So in front of every comic book box where there's that blank white space that's facing everybody, put signs. Don't be afraid to do that. And like I said, do either a separation where you may end up not having an extra box or two, but you have a space where they can put their food. Or again, take folding tables, put them in front of the booths, not out over the whole thing, but a spot here and there, and say, this is a place for your food, and mention it as soon as you see somebody. If you see somebody walking and approaching your booth, and you see them with a, a plate of pizza and a soda, as soon as you see them walking close to you, say, hi, hi, um, there's a table right there for your convenience if you want to put your stuff down while you browse. Be friendly about it. Don't be like, oh, you, you can't have that. Because what are they going to do? They're going to get insulted. They're going to get defensive. They're going to walk away, and you could potentially lose business. So be very careful about that. So there's ways to do it. All right. Initial setup and location. Now, here's the thing. In business, you got to spend money to make money. Now, I know because I've done comic book booths with my uncle when I was a kid. I tried to sell some of my comics when I was a little kid. He had a booth. He asked me to go with him. So, you know... We wanted to set everything up. Now, I understand because I've seen, you know, being in the comic industry here, I get people offering me, you know, do you want to sell at Comic-Cons and things like that? I don't sell my books, so I don't really need that. But I see the prices. I understand that some of these booths can be thousands of dollars. But the last thing you want is to be in the back corner where nobody's going to pay attention to you and you spend half the money to be there. Because if you're not making any sales... What is the purpose of being there? So you have to think about, is the price that you're paying for the, the location you're getting or the size of the space you're getting, is it worth it for you? So 
it's better off sometimes spending a little extra money to be able to get a better location because I used to be a real estate agent at one point. It wasn't for a long time, but even my mother, she's been a broker for real estate for 30 plus years. And the biggest three words in real estate, and if you've ever been in real estate, you know this, the three most important things about real estate is location, location, and location. So think about that when you set up your booth, if you have the ability to pick and choose. Now, if you don't, that's beyond your control, but you have to make sure you're in a spot that people are going to see you because traffic is what brings sales. You don't want to be one of those booths in the corner where you're sitting there like this all day. Because first of all, if you're one of those people that sits there like this all day, who's going to approach you? We're going to get more into that a little bit later. All right, so here's a big one that I've seen in not only Comic-Cons, I've seen it in um, comic book stores. And this is one of those you can't have it both ways. And again, I understand. And this is people, when they're browsing through the the boxes that are in front of them, bending the comics. In other words, they lift them out a little bit, and they're kind of seeing what it is. They bend it a little bit, put it back, and so on. Okay. Now, I understand that when you're at a Comic-Con and you have a limited amount of space, you want to cram as much as you can into that booth so you could make the most profit. If you overstuff the boxes... To the point, and I've seen this at my local comic book stores, I can't even go through their boxes because they are so crammed tight that you almost have to literally force it out just to get it out in between all the comics. That's going to damage the comics. So you have to, you can't complain that people are going to damage the comics and then overstuff them. And again, I understand why people do it. You can't have it both ways. So... Either you're going to have to accept the fact that if you're going to cram so many comics in a box that it's not going to be movable, that some of your comics are going to be damaged, or you put less comics in there so there's more room and it reduces the chance. But again, you want to have people paying attention. So again, I'm going to get into that more a little bit. So if you don't want people pulling out the comics, well, you want to reduce it and make it easier for them to look at them. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, another one that they were talking about, and another good point, and I see this all the time, people blocking the booths. Now, you're going to see at Comic-Cons, you can see even the image that I put on the, um, the thumbnail, they cram booths one after the other because the person that's renting that entire space is trying to make as much money as possible. So they're not caring about you making money. They're caring about them making money. That's why you'll see a booth with another booth crammed next to each other, another booth crammed next to each other. So you have limited space. So you're going to have people that may be interested in the other booths on either side of you getting in your space. And that could be frustrating. Well, there's simple solutions to that. Again, if you put tables on either side at the edge, if you take big pieces of cardboard or one of those wire kind of fences and stick them out a little bit, to separate your booth from theirs even more. Well, that gives people the ability to stay in your booth if they're looking for your stuff and have to walk around your little deflectionary device to look at somebody else's booth. So little things like that. Like I said, you don't have to spend lots of money. You can buy a big thing of cardboard, stick it in between the booth, and then separate a little bit so there's this a little extended lip so the people have to walk around it and they're not cluttering your booth. Because if they're not spending money at your booth, they're counterproductive. Okay, so that also goes with presentation. You don't want your, your booth to look like a yard sale. Now, I understand, again, cost. Most people are going to just set up a table, put a bunch of boxes on it, and they're just going to leave it that way. It doesn't look visually appearing, appealing. Now, whether you like it or not, the numbers suggest there are more men that are buying comics than women. That does not suggest that women don't, because there are plenty are. But statistically speaking, there are more men that buy comics than women. And if you know anything about the male species, they are very visually oriented. We like looking at very attractive things. So when you go to a comic booth that looks like a yard sale, looks like something at Walmart where, or a um, thrift store or a dollar store where things are thrown all over the place, 
they tend to stay away from them. So again, it's that you got to spend money to make money. So do you have glass cases? Do you have a nice looking display on the back? Or are you just sticking up everything that you can all over the place to get maximum space in the limited amount that you have? Sometimes less is more. Quality over quantity. So that's where I want to talk about what you're selling. Because one of the things I know about comic book stores, comic cons, dollar bin boxes, they're trying to get rid of books that they don't want. That's why they're selling them. Now, of course, when you have an Amazing Fantasy 15, when you have an Action Comics number one, Detective Comics number 27, these are the money makers. These are the ones you're going to make the most profit on. And you're pretty much selling those, not because you really want to get rid of them, but you know what kind of money you're going to get. The biggest thing I see as a problem with people that sell all over the place is they sell those cheap dollar books that nobody really wants, the fillers. And to me, that is wasted space. I'll give you a prime example, and I won't mention the, the um, channel's name because it's not a shout out. It's not a shout or a shot. I went to one of the live auction shows on YouTube, and I had money ready to spend. And the first two auctions that they put up were decent comics. As a matter of fact, I won one of them. The other one I didn't bid because I just did. There was one comic in there I did not want. But. After that, there was nothing but fillers. And I'm sitting there for almost two hours, almost begging them to put up something of importance that I was ready to throw my money at, and it never happened. So I understand that people want to get rid of their, their runs, those cheap comics, and those are the ones you see in the front. And you'll get plenty of browsers. But you don't want browsers, you want buyers. And that's why, for example... When I used to gamble a lot, now I wasn't a, I didn't have a gambling problem or anything, but I was very good at blackjack. As a matter of fact, I used to teach people how to play blackjack. One of the things I never did was I never sat down at the minimum table of blackjack. You know why? Because those people don't know how to play. So I would always go to a higher priced um, booth. So this way, I knew the people that were there were more likely to know what they were doing because they had more to lose if they didn't. So it's the same thing with comic book booths. I see this same mistake over and over and over again. You could see it at every Comic-Con. You don't even have to be there. You could just look at the pictures. You'll see all of these boxes of books that are probably $10 or less. And people that don't have money who are just looking in to find that, you know, Batman Adventures 12 and not finding it is not really going to buy anything. And if they end up saying, well, I was there for two hours, I want to come out with something, and they buy $5 worth of merchandise from you, did you really win? Because remember, time is money. So what I would highly suggest is, I understand that, you know, there are some people that are going to look for fillers for their runs of Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Batman, etc. But put those on the floor behind the the main books, and put signs that say, if you're looking for a specific book, ask. We may have it. It might not be there. And real quick, Comic Addiction, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. He says he's at work, just stopping by to show support. Happy Thursday, everybody. Much love from Comic Addiction. Always appreciate that. And if anybody does super chat, um, I will read it as soon as I see it. Somebody asked what super chat is. If you look right below where you type your comments, you'll see this square with a dollar sign. That's the super chat. And that's why you see it highlighted. So if you want to do it, you can, but you don't have to. But again, when it comes to your sales, you are there to make money. So why do you want to put out a bunch of books that probably will not sell? Because when I was younger and I used to go to Comic-Cons, I would see all the time, especially the last day, people having to pack all those books back up. Now, it's like moving. Nobody loves moving. That's why friends don't exactly jump to volunteer to help you move if you're going to do that. So you want to sell things that you know will sell. So I would rather have less 
books, but more expensive books that I know will sell than thousands upon thousands of books that pretty much most people don't want. And the ones that do are spending, what, five or ten dollars? I would rather sell ten books that are worth a thousand, which took me two seconds to set up, than a hundred books at a dollar to five dollars a piece. So you have to utilize your space to the best of its ability. If you're if you have box upon box of what I like to call fillers, 90% of it is probably never going to sell and the ones that do you're making $5 here, $10 there. How is that really helping you make money, especially if you're spending thousands of dollars for a booth? So quality over quantity is very important. And plus Again, if you have a proper display, you could put out really nice comics. You could put them in display cases. You could say, look, I am a person of quality, so you know you're buying something of quality. Not here. Come to my little garage sale, my little thrift store, and find that 50-cent comic you've been looking for. If that's the business you want to tr attract, you're better off going on eBay because all the overhead is going to make you go out of business. Whether you love this or not, if your business is selling comics, you also want to make money. And you have to remember all the factors. So let's get into some of the things that I would highly recommend. Because like I said, I have a sales experience. I just don't do it anymore because it's just not for me. Not that I couldn't do it. I just don't find it fun. All right. So first of all, things that you can do while you're at the comic book, whether it's a store, even on eBay, but again, we're focusing on Comic-Cons. Do you upsell? Well, what does that mean? Well, let's say, for example, somebody's looking for, um, let's say, Iron Man number one. And they see one on the shelf that is ungraded, looks like a 2.0. Now, you know somebody that's looking for a book like that has some kind of money. Because that book is probably going to be at least $100, if not a little bit more. So they're not looking through the dollar bin. So it's knowing your customer. So when they look at that book, or again, you show them the book, and you take it out, and you show them, and they say, I, I might be interested in buying this, you suggest an upsell. They say, well, if you like this book, I have an Iron Man that's a 5.0, that's a little bit more, but look how much more visually attractive that book is. Sell the product. Sell yourself. So if that person's already thinking about buying a certain book and you know it's worth a certain amount of money, see if they're willing to spend a little bit more for something better. Explain to them the benefits of having a higher grade comic. Don't just say, oh, I'm about to get a sale. Let me just throw that in and get that money. Try and see if you can get them to, you know, buy up. Don't assume that somebody that's buying a comic knows everything. Don't assume that they know what they want. They may have an idea of what they want, but you can actually recommend them to do something where they're getting what they want, but even better, and you made more money making the effort. So that's why another thing that I say is about recommendations. Do you do recommendations? In other words, suggestive selling. So let's say, for example, somebody comes to your booth and says, hey, I got about $5,000 to spend. That's every, but that's every seller's dream. But let's just say they come up to you and say, hi, I'm looking for Hulk 181. Do you have it? And let's just say you happen to have a Hulk 181 on the, on the shelf. You show it to them and they say, you know what? I want to buy that. I'm buying that book from you right now. They like the price. Maybe you haggled with them a little bit, but they're going to buy it from you. Don't just take that sale and say, thank you. Come again. Have a nice day. You say to them, listen, I don't know if you know this, but Hulk 181 is the first full appearance of Wolverine. Two other comics that I would suggest, take them off the shelf and say, here's Hulk 180. This is the first actual appearance of Wolverine. This is a book that most people don't think about and is definitely a book that is undervalued. You should get this book. Place it in front of them. Then you say, to finish the trilogy, maybe take down Hulk 182. And you say, this is actually his second cameo appearance it's a book that most people don't think about. It's an undervalued book. This is a book I would highly recommend because a movie's coming out. Place that down. 
Let them say no thank you, because you never know. They might say, well, you know what? I didn't know about that, or I didn't think about that, or thank you for mentioning those. Let me pick up both of them, or you know what? Let me pick up 180. So in other words, you just made a suggestion to make an additional sale on what a sale has already been processed. And I see this so many times. People are so afraid. They, they get so excited that somebody's coming to their booth or their store or their business and they're buying something and they instead of saying let me suggest a couple of things because you're the professional whether you've been in comic books for a week or 10 years the person that comes to your booth has no idea unless they know you personally so act the professional so if somebody's ordering a book suggest others don't just say you know what you might want this place it in front of them Make them look, ooh, look at this pretty shiny thing. You're already getting this. You need this. Explain to them why they need it and place it in front of them. Make them say, no, thank you, because you'd be surprised at how many times they say, you know what? I will get that book. And you just made an additional sale. You have to have confidence if you're going to be a seller. And one of the biggest things I see is when people sell things that they love, they tend to not have the business sense aspect and they end up damaging themselves. So if the person passes up on it, who knows? Maybe the person next to him was listening to the conversation and said, wow, I didn't know Hulk 180 was the first actual appearance of Wolverine. That book seems reasonable. I'll get it. Make suggestions. Be confident. Know what you're selling. And you will get more sales than just the one you're settling for. Leave that emotional part out of it. This is a business. Whether you love what you're selling or hate what you're selling, you got to separate the emotional part from the business. So an another one I suggest, know your buyers. Now, the biggest thing in sales is, I used to do cold call sales for a long time. Made a lot of money. Did a lot of other sales in different places. I was very good at it. Now, the last thing you want to do is have a five-hour conversation with somebody that's not there to buy anything. They're just there because, you know, a lot of comic book people are very solitary people. That's the, not everybody, but a lot of people tend to be very solitary. So when they get out in public and they see somebody sharing the same interest they do, they want to have a conversation. Now, as nice as that is, you're there to make money. You're not there to make friends. Because if you were there to make friends, you would be in front of the booth, not behind it. So know your seller. Know your sale. Know your customer. Is that person there to browse? Or is that person there to buy? Because that's why I say if you put all those cheap comics in front of the booth, you're going to get people just looking. You don't want lookers. You want buyers. So that's why I say I'd rather have less comics of books that people want than a whole bunch of comics that no one really cares about. You want to attract the people with money, not attract the people that love the hobby. I mean, that's nice, and it's nice to have the conversations, but do you really want to be there for two hours listening to some guy explain to you how he got Tales of Suspense number 39 in 1975 when he was a five-year-old kid? Really? No, you're there to make money. Time is money. So pay attention. Give more attention to the person that looks like they're looking at the top shelf things. Look at their appearance. Are they somebody in a business suit? That may suggest they have more money. Is it somebody that looks like they just, you know, came out of the rain and just did a marathon? I know that may be cruel to sound or mean to sound like, but when you're a salesperson, you have to concentrate on what's going to give you the best income. So you have to actually, you can't just judge everybody. Don't assume that somebody wearing dreadlocks is somebody that's poor. But go by their actions. If they're constantly looking and looking for hours trying to find that deal, they're not going to really spend money. You want the people? Quick sale. I want that book. What can you suggest for me? Thank you very much. Have a great day. Come back. Know your buyers. Okay. Customer service is so important. Like I said before, you don't want somebody doing this. I've seen this when I used to go to Comic-Cons, when I watch videos, even in stores. The people behind the desk, the one of the places that went out of business around by me, the comic book store that was probably about 10 minutes away from me, went out of business. That guy, his facial expression and his attitude was, I don't want to be there. I can't stand being here. What a surprise you went out of business. You don't want to be one of those people at a booth that looks so desperate for a sale because people feed off of energy. If you look like you're this and you're depressed and you're looking at your watch and you're, oh, no one's going to buy from me and you look like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, do you think people are going to approach you? 
Do you think people are going to buy from you? Do you think you're going to have the energy to upsell or to make suggestions? Or are you just going to get the first dollar that somebody's willing to give you? So customer service is very important. You want to be friendly, but you also want to be genuine. The worst thing you can do is be one of those people that's over the top pretending to be something they're not. People understand who's fake and who's real. Now, of course, not everybody has that perceptional ability, but pe most people, for the most part, can tell when you're full of garbage. So don't go over the top. Don't be overacting because that pushes people away. Be yourself, but be knowledgeable. And that's the next thing about being knowledgeable. Know what you're selling. Be able to answer questions. And if somebody asks you a question that you don't know, number one, don't respond with saying, oh, I don't know. Don't just make something up that sounds good. Don't lie to the person. I'll say to them, well, I don't know that, but I'm going to look it up for you. You have a cellular phone these days that has internet access. You have laptops that you should be bringing with you with the ability to check the internet. So if somebody asks you a question that you do not know, you need to answer it. So you say to them, like if they say, um, hi, what's the first appearance of Garbage Man? And you've never heard of that character. If you say you don't know, well, you might have had that book and didn't know it, and then they're going to go somewhere else. Or if you say, well, Garbage Man, I think is Tales of Suspense number 12, and they buy it and find out that wasn't it, they're going to be pretty mad at you. So you ha you say, well, I don't, I don't know offhand who that is, but let me check for you. Go on the internet, da 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 first appearance of Garbage Man, you find out is Tales of Sus to Astonish number 17. You're in luck, sir or ma'am, I happen to have that book. This is the book you're looking for. Or if they're asking you a question that they don't know, you say, hi, I'm looking for, I'm not sure the artist, but they did this certain book. Again, if you don't know it, look it up. Know your information because they are coming to you as the you being the professional. Whether you act professional or not, that remains to be seen because when I used to go to comic stores, um, uh, comic cons and comic stores and see it on the videos and stuff, most people are not very professional. And you get what you give, so you have to be knowledgeable, which also goes with personality. Again, you don't want somebody moping. You don't want somebody there that looks like they'd rather be somewhere else. If you cannot have the uh, capacity, because here's the biggest thing about sales. The number one thing that you need to sell is yourself, because if they don't like you, most of the time, they don't care what kind of deals you're going to give them. Why do you think most people view a used car salesman as a negative term? It's because they're always wheeling and dealing and trying to take advantage of you and lying to you or giving you misinformation. Nobody likes that. You have to have a good, honest personality, which again goes with customer service, being knowledgeable, being friendly, not being over the top and being like some kind of carnival salesman. You don't want to be that. You want to be genuine but you want to be friendly. You want to listen to people. You want to answer their questions instead of saying, I don't know. You don't want to give them a look like yelling at them like you're their mother or father. Like if they put the food on the table or they touch the back books. If you don't give them an indication that they can't do it, they most likely will. But you can't yell at them and berate them because you're not going to get a sale from somebody you just made feel foolish, especially in public. Okay. So, here's another major important thing that I see even on YouTube all the time. And this is very important with any sale of any item. But again, we're sticking with Comic-Con and comic books. Consider all costs. When you have a business, a business is not, I paid for something and I sold something. That is what the value of the book is. No. When you are at Comic-Con, for example, how much did it cost you to get that booth? You have to write that down. How much did it cost you to get there? You have to write that down. Was there gas? Was there train tickets? Was there bus fare? Okay. How much food did you consume that you paid for? How many employees are you paying to work there? These are all things that take away from your profits. And if you do not register and count all of those things in advance and plan those things, I don't care how much you sell, if you sell less than what you spent, it is not profitable and it is not worth it. 
So again, if you have to spend $1,000 just for the booth and you sell $101 books, yes, you made 100 sales, but you lost $900, not including transportation, not including food costs, everything else is a factor. And that's why I tell people that own comic book stores, you have to understand they have electric bills, they have rent, they have employees, they have storage equipment. These things have to be factored. You cannot pretend they don't exist and think you're going to have a very successful business. So you have to be a very aware of your costs and factor them in with what you are willing to sell. Because if you sell less than what you spend, whether you pretend you did it or not is irrelevant to your bottom line. And again, most people that I've seen, especially that sell things like comics, and I'm not saying exclusively to comic people, I've seen it all over the place, when you sell something you have passion with without the business sense and the business knowledge, you are not making profits, whether you admit it, mention it, deny it, or what. So you have to factor in all costs. So that's another one. All right, here's another one that could be considered a no-brainer. Do you accept credit cards? Now, when I used to um, do yard sales, a friend of mine, a friend of the family used to do yard sales, and they always wanted me there because I always sold very expensive stuff. I, most people at yard sales, they're lucky if they make $20, $30, $40. $40. I would walk out of my yard sales working at this friend's house making hundreds of dollars every time. I just got tired of having to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and have to confront a bunch of people that were looking for 10-cent items. But one of the big things that I was successful at is on my cell phone, I had the ability to accept credit cards. What does that do? It gives people the ability to spend more money than they have. Now, as a buyer, I recommend never to use credit cards to make a purchase because if you cannot, if you don't have the money to buy something, you shouldn't be buying it. You put yourself in credit, you put yourself in debt, you put yourself in danger. But the reality is most people spend credit cards whether they know it's good for them or not. Most people are fiscally and financially irresponsible. You want to give them the ability to be able to spend more money on you and not somebody else. So if you do not accept credit cards, you're losing a lot of sales. No one takes checks anymore, and a lot of people don't carry cash that much anymore. Or if they do, they don't carry a lot of it. Me, I like to, when I make a business deal, I am always an all-cash deal person. Because you know why? I can get a lot more discounts with cash than credit card. Because first of all, credit cards have fees. Second of all, I have that money to give them right there. If you're a person that does take credit cards... They have to wait after the processing fees and all the other bank fees and all the other security fees. They have to wait a couple of days before it can get into the bank unless they spend extra fees to get it instantly deposited. So again, taking away from your profitability. Now keep in mind, if somebody uses a credit card, you will have fees, so you will make less money. So if you sell a $1,000 book on a credit card, it's going to be less profit than somebody pays $1,000 for cash. So you should accept credit cards, but give special deals for somebody that pays in cash. So you do want to have the ability, but always try and stress cash deals. Tell some people, well, this $1,000 book, if you pay for it by credit card, it's $1,000. But if you pay cash, I'll take $20 off it right now. The art of the comic deal, and that's exactly why I titled it the way it is. Again, it's all about having a business sense. Having knowledge about comics and knowing where the first appearance of Spider-Man, Superman, the amazing, you know, Fantasy 15s of the world and things like that, that's wonderful. But if you don't know anything about the business sense, you're going to sell a bunch of comics and make no money. Makes no sense. So make sure you have the ability to sell credit cards, but you do want to focus more on cash if you can. Work little deals if you have to. Here's another thing that most people don't do. When somebody makes a purchase, especially a larger purchase... Do you offer them a little free gift? In other words, let's say somebody just spent $5,000 on your booth. You suggested sales, and they bought your suggestions. You upsailed. They went from a 2.0 to a 4.0 book and spent more money. How many people do you maybe say, all right, you spent $5,000. You know what? See these books over here? Take your pick of one of them. It's on me. Or, you know what? I'm going to take $25 off of your price because I appreciate your business. You know how much people love that? You know how much people will end up recommending your booth or talking about your booth or your product? Think of it as advertisement. 
it's free advertisement because if somebody likes the experience they've had with you, they are going to mention it. Also, if they don't like your service, they're going to mention it. So of the two, which kind of free advertisement would you prefer? So think of it as you're not just giving away a free pro product. You're, you're getting free advertisement. So if somebody spends a lot of money, don't just be greedy, take all of that money and wish them on their merry way. Because you never know, they may live close to your comic store if you have one. Or they may find out about your eBay store and purchase from you again. Like they say, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So anybody in sales can screw somebody and lie to them or take advantage of them. It's very difficult to do it twice. The idea of a good salesman is not to be able to get that deal one time. It's to get a person that wants to continue to come back to you and give you more and more businesses. More and more business. And that's why a lot of businesses fail. Because they think, ah, I just suckered that person. You might have suckered that person, but people are going to learn you have that reputation. Your business is not going to last. Or at the very least, they're not going to go to you. They're going to go to your competitor. So give free items. But don't just do it to anybody. Don't have somebody that just spent $5 on comic books. They spent two hours looking through all your books, probably damaging half of them, by giving them a reward of a book that's probably worth more than what they spent. Again, know your customer. So don't be afraid to give something free. Okay. In every sale that you make, or even if people are just browsing, have flyers and business cards there to hand out. Whether they throw them out or not, you cannot control. But if for every 10 people you hand them out, even if 9 people throw them out, if that one person comes back and gets another sale from you another day, that is successful. How much does it cost to make flyers? And especially if somebody buys from you, do you have an eBay store? Do you have a Facebook or Instagram account? Do you have a comic book store? Place a flyer with all of that information, your Instagram, your Facebook, your business phone number, your business address if you have one, and let people know. It's like, listen, thank you for the sale. I hope you come again. Here is information on how you can contact me, where my store is, where my eBay store is. Give them that information. You are directly dealing with the customer base on the very products that you're selling. You want to get them to have the ability to come back. Because especially at a Comic-Con, they only last for one to three days. After that, it's done. If you have a comic book store, or if you sell on YouTube auctions, or if you have an eBay store, you want to give them the ability to find you. Don't assume they're going to do it. Don't make it difficult. Because most people are lazy. They don't want to look stuff up. You know how many times in my YouTube career on both my channels, I would tell people, I did all the research, I did all the work, all you have to do is click this link so you could read the information. You'd be amazed at how many people will not even click a link. So if you want after sale, don't just get overly excited that you made that one sale after sitting there like this for two and a half hours and just let them walk away. Give them the ability to have the ability to contact you. So have fly, make up flyers in advance. Make business cards. You can go on Zazzle.com. That's Z-A-Z-Z-L-E.com. And you can get a thousand business cards for like $19. It is also a tax write-off. So again, business knowledge. How many things do you give away? Or if you have t-shirts and stuff, how many of you know those are business expenses? Those are write-offs. If you are an independent contractor, which you are, you have the ability to write off your gas receipts. So how many of you are saving your gas receipts? Your food while you're working? Your internet access? Because if you're answering questions and you have to look it up on the laptop, you can actually deduct your internet fees as a business, ex um, a business expense as a tax write-off. Your gas receipts, or if you take a train into the Comic-Con, that's a business expense. How many of you are saving those receipts? Because that's money that you would lose if you didn't do it. Again, selling comics is one thing. Knowing everything about every comic book is wonderful. But if you know nothing about the business, you're hurting yourself. So you have to learn how to be into businesses. And that's a great suggestion from a hacked account. Add coupons. I forgot that one, and that is a great thing right there. Add coupons. And not coupons for what you're getting now. Say for your next visit. 
Here's a $10 off coupon. Or even put a sign that says, you spend $100, you get a $1 coupon. You get you spend $500, you get a $10 coupon. Spend 1000 or more, get this. People like free stuff. You ever wonder at a baseball game how many people dive and try and murder somebody for what is basically a $4 Walmart baseball? What about people that throw t-shirts into the audience? People will murder somebody to cram over some little kid to grab a $5 t-shirt. These are business expenses, but people love them. How many people love a free pen? Does it have your business name on it? Does it have your contact on it? You have to spend money to make money. But something as simple as a coupon, on that flyer, you could just write in 10% off your next order or something like that. Free advertisement. Get them to not only buy from you once, but buy from you again and recommend other people. That is a That was a great tip. Okay. All right, so I already talked about this one. Sell what people want. Don't just sell just to sell. All right, here's a big one. Have plenty of people working for you. Now, again, you have to spend money to make money. But if you're the only person behind the booth, you cannot pay attention to the customer here, the person that's putting their food over here, the person looking at all those expensive books, and eventually people will get frustrated and walk away. And unfortunately, you're going to get some people that are going to try and steal your items, or maybe they're purposely destroying them because they think it's funny, or they're trying to make their own YouTube video where they're filming you know, one of those prank videos where they're damaging all your books. The less people you have, the more likely bad things can happen. And they will happen even if it's an accident. So you got to hire people. You got to have somebody for security. You have to have somebody for customer service. You have to have somebody for sales. Now, I understand you may not be able to afford to pay for these people, but can you get family to help you? Can you get friends to help you? Or what about saying, especially let's say you own a comic book store or you have a lot of comic book friends. If you don't have the money, what if you say, you know what? I'll give you discounted comics or I'll give you a free comic if you stay the day with me in this booth. Use the brain. Barter works just as good as money sometimes. So let's say somebody wanted a uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 100. They didn't have the money to buy it. And you say, listen, if you come work for me for the day at the booth, I'll give you 50% off or heck, I'll give you that book for free as payment. You know how many people will say yes? So the more people you have to protect your stuff and keep an eye on stuff, the less likely damage will happen, the less likely people will put food on the thing, and the more customers you will be paying attention to. Because as a customer, if I'm waiting on a line for too long, while one or two people are taking care of people, and there's dozens of people waiting, and others are sitting around doing nothing, or there's nobody there to help me, I walk out and I go somewhere else. So if you're a business... The last thing you want to do is have potential customers walk away because you didn't get enough people to be able to service them. Or again, you're not paying t attention to your buyer and you're spending all your time on somebody that's buying $10 worth of comics instead of the one guy or girl that may have wanted to spend 10000 You have to have people. And again, it doesn't always have to be money. Think outside the box. Tell somebody, oh, remember you wanted your roof fixed? Well, guess what? I am an expert roofer. How about this? You work for me at the Comic-Con today, and next weekend I'll finish your roof. Use your brain. These are things that can be done. All right, and last but not least, I think this is one of the most important things. Be honest and be non-biased. Leave your emotions and feelings at home. You may be a Marvel fan. You may hate DC, but if you are one of those people and they, you have a customer that loves DC and you're putting them down or you're making fun of them or you're not giving them the attention they deserve, they're not going to buy from you. Again, sell yourself. So if somebody asks you a question, like I said before, don't tell you you don't know. Say If you don't know, you look it up. Don't give an answer that sounds good. You want to be truthful. If somebody asks you the honest opinion of CGC, PGX, and CBCS, and you only love CGC, and you can say they do no wrong, you're not giving your customers what they want. And that's an honest feedback. If you're using your bias, people will sense it. They may be offended. They may not believe you. They may challenge you. Overall, you will lose business. 
So you have to get rid of the, I like this stuff, so I'm only going to promote that. I believe in this product, so I'm going to assume everybody else, or I'm going to tell everybody else, this is what you need. People don't like that. Don't tell them what they need because they may differ from you. Don't put them down or give them less credibility because, like, for example, I may want a PGX book. I may want a CBCS book. If you only love CGC and you're telling me that I'm stupid or foolish or try and sell me something I don't want, I'm going somewhere else. Because like a hair cutting place, like a pizza place, like a laundromat, they're all over the place. What makes you stand out as opposed to everybody else that has the same comics you're selling, probably for the same price? It's what are you willing to do? How do you present yourself? Do you do the things that a person wants? Look at it from the customer's perspective. Most people cannot do that. And again, when it comes to something like comic books, most people that sell them, they sell them because they love them and they'll know everything about the comics. But if you don't know about customer service, if you don't know about getting rid of bias and being honest, if you don't understand how business expenses work and tax write-offs and all these things, you're going to lose money even if you don't realize you're doing it. Because the worst, the worst pain injury you can ever get is one that you don't know the underlying damage it's caused. So you have to be knowledgeable. You have to be friendly. If you cannot do these things, you should not be selling because you will lose. And that is why so many small businesses with the greatest of intentions, with the highest of excitement, go out of business because they only pay attention to one part. And like I said on a video the other day on my other channel, if you have an apple... And you take half of that apple and polish it and keep it nice and clean. And you let the other half rot. What do you think is going to happen to that entire apple? It's going to destroy the whole thing. And this is what I'm going to leave you with. Because there's an old saying that I go by. Is if you have 99 pounds of ice cream and combine one pound of poop, what do you have? You have 100 pounds of poop. So it doesn't matter if you know everything about every character ever created. It doesn't matter if you know every single story and every single year that every single book was made. If you know nothing about customer service, if you do not treat people with respect, if you do not listen to the customer and understand that the customer is always right, and you pay attention to the people that are giving you money, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to lose money. And that's not the purpose of that. So... I'm going to leave it at that, and I will do today's surprise subscriber shout. I always do that. I know this is a long video. Hopefully, it will help people. Some people won't listen. That's not what I'm here for. So I'm going to do somebody further back. So this will get way it will give people an incentive to keep listening. So I'm going to give this shout out today to uh, James Williams. So James, you are today's surprise subscriber shout out. I love that everybody's here. We had, I think, uh, up to 80 people watching at this point. But this is great information for people. Whether you take it or not is up to you. If, if somebody takes it defensively thinking that I'm a, you know, attacking their ability or their lack of business sense or anything like that. And I'm not saying anybody has that. What I'm saying is I see this all the time. Loving something is a great first step. But it's not the only step when it comes to business. And if you want it to be successful, you will end up making lots of money and ultimately that's why you're doing it whether you admit it or not you're not there to throw give away your stuff you're not there to lose money it just makes no sense so i want to thank everybody for taking the time captain crunch you're coming in at the end so hopefully when this process is you will check it out and remember you don't have to be in comic sales um in comic cons to get some of these benefits you don't even have to sell comics this can help with any business Hopefully it helps you. And if it does, give it a thumbs up. Share it with people. If you know anybody that owns a comic book store or goes to a comic con and you think any of this information can actually help improve their business, share this. Because this is not telling people you're bad and you don't know what you're talking about. This is me seeing problems and finding ways that you can solve them or see things at a different level to help improve your already maybe even positive experience. So you won't be one of those companies that go under. Because re there's a reason why businesses go under. Because they sit there saying, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. I know what I'm talking about. They always have that attitude. And one of the biggest things, and I'll leave you off at this, is I've been a karaoke DJ for 20 years. 
And I suggest all the time that what th bars can do to make their businesses better. They yes me to death all the time. Or some of them get insulted saying, how dare you? And you know what? 80% of the bars I've ever worked at and within the past 20 years have gone out of business. So you could be one of those people that says, oh, I know what I'm talking about. Or look at Chris. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't like him, so I'm not going to listen. Or if, you're not, uh, if you do not have the ability to listen to constructive criticism, then you should not be in business and you will eventually lose your business. I don't care how passionate you are about something. The financial part is the part that will determine whether you're successful or whether you have lost everything. So a fool and their money are soon parted. Don't be one of the fools. So hopefully you'll get some information. You'll see this as my ability to want to help people improve, not to insult anybody in any way. Look up Comic Tom, and I want to specifically thank him personally for that video because it definitely inspired me to do this one. I put the link in the um, in this live chat in the beginning so you could scroll up and see it. Uh, check out his channel, and uh, don't forget, it's not you, it's not I, it's We Love Comics. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great day. Next time you see me, I'll be 48. Peace.